And welcome everybody. I'm here with Maria, Michael, and Philip. Uh, this is the uh, first class for the January 2020 um, Understanding the Business of Wine. Uh, we'll go through an overview of the syllabus, the course, how things work, and uh, I want everybody to understand uh, that at the beginning there's usually uh, a lot of things to kind of remember and sort out. We'll go through each of the components of the course, making sure everybody uh, can get into the Napa Valley Wine Academy site, which I'm at right now. And uh, uh, any problems with the Napa Valley Wine Academy site, um, uh, if you have trouble logging in or, or with your password or whatever, they manage this site. And then uh, we're gonna be uh, using the um, Wine Business Education Financial Planners that uh, I manage as well as the Facebook page. So those are the, the kind of the three basic parts that we'll go through. And um, for Maria, Michael, or Philip, did and any problems before we get underway? Are you guys uh, pretty well good to go? Uh, other than the normal chaos of starting a new course? No, everything went really well. Okay, great. Um, and so on, on every one of the emails that I send out, my cell phone's uh, in my signature line. So anybody who needs personal help or having a problem, we can set up. And then that'll be the same number for uh, as we go along for anybody who wants to set up a personal call. Uh, which I can uh, I'll explain a little bit more about that later. So let's um, get started. On the Napa Valley Wine Academy site is, is my bio. Uh, just a real quick background. Uh, I've, I started studying wine in 1966, so uh, 54 years ago. <laughs> um, and uh, 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 I'm also a professional chef by training. I tried to go into the wine business, but everybody said, well, you're too young to drink. You can't be in the wine business. So I, I cooked professionally for 10 years with a really keen interest in wine long before it was a hip thing to do. Uh, and then um, uh, I, I left the culinary world, started uh, my first real job in the wine business, 1979. Uh, as a wine retailer, buyer, store manager in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, left that to become a wine broker, and we'll talk about wine brokers and who they are and what they do, but I represented a, a large portfolio of producers from around the world in the southeastern U U.S. Um, I joined the Behringer Organization in 1988, uh, now Treasury Wine Estates, and I was director of of uh, communications and public relations, and then later uh, director of international business development and managed uh, the Canada and Asia markets uh, in addition to exploring uh, expansion markets uh, uh, for those wines. I left Behringer in 1999 and started my, my entrepreneurial pursuits. Uh, along the way, after I joined Behringer, I had applied to the Institute of Masters of Wine to, um, uh, to sit their examination and earn my MW credentials, uh, which I did in 1990. And my friend Joel Butler and I became the first two Americans actually to become Masters of Wine, which is something I'm very proud of. And that same year, I also became a certified wine educator with the uh, Society of Wine Education. Uh, I've been teaching a business approach to learning about wine for many, many years. This, this goes all the way back into um, uh, the early 80s in Atlanta. And I thought, you know, uh, there, there's a lot of book information and, and details and trivia and history and soils and all this kind of stuff, but uh, take under, understanding the businesses behind it is is a very overlooked area, even at, at very high levels of wine education. So uh, over the years, uh, I've, I've, I've taught about 
wine from a business perspective. Uh, then I was on the board of Cal Poly uh, University in San Luis Obispo. I was on their development board for their wine program and uh, started to formalize workbooks and and so on. So you'll get the benefit of many, many years of, of development of financial calculators and workbooks, and we'll go over that. So uh, I lived in Napa from 1988 in uh, the early 90s. I married the singer in the rock Motown band that I play in. That's my beautiful wife, Kate. Uh, we got uh, two kids. They live in San Diego, and I'm a granddad now. And uh, Kate and I live in Bend, Oregon. So that's where I'm broadcasting to you from. So that's a little bit about my background. Uh, when you go into the Napa Valley Wine uh, Academy, you also uh, get an overview of the course. And so you can go in and review that. Uh, and then um, uh, this will be our first uh, lesson segment. So e we have four lessons, two weeks each. And this is what we're going to be doing for the first two weeks with a, a real focus on uh, vineyard development, um, uh, the, the business of vineyards and grapes, and the, the business of production. Okay, so that'll be our first two-week segment. Then we're going to go into different uh, wine business structures and production options. This includes, you know, estate wineries or custom crush facilities or things called alternating proprietorships, but there are different ways that wine businesses are structured. Um, at the end of that, that'll be the halfway point of the course. We'll go into marketing, distribution, and sales. And I do want to say from the outset that as we look even into vineyard uh, development and grape costs and whatever, uh, consider it's all marketing. It really is. Uh, so there's, there's an overriding marketing element, but we'll get specifically into marketing distribution and sales at the halfway point. And then the final two weeks, we'll be working on what does a, a, a wine, uh, winery business plan look like? Uh, and there will be a number of different options uh, when we get to that junction uh, in, in the course. So we'll go over that, okay? And anybody that has any questions at any time, just kick right in. Uh, you can use the chat function, but I, I, uh, I kind of discourage it. Uh, but if you have something you want to send just to me directly, uh, use the chat and I'll try to notice it. But it it, it distracts me. So the way we're going to approach things is looking at wine as many, many businesses. Uh, uh, we're going to focus on kind of the supply chain from vineyard to production to sales and marketing and distribution and uh, uh, to the consumer. But along the way, we're also going to talk about the businesses that support each juncture along the way of the supply chain. Um, Requirements for completing this course, uh, if you need the certificate from Napa Valley Wine Academy, you will need to turn in a, a cost of goods project. We'll go over that, and that's what we're going to be working on for the first two weeks. Uh, there's a blending project at mid midpoint, but that's optional. And then there's just at the end of this uh, a financial project of your choice and the business plan, and that's it. There's not quizzes, or not tests, and so forth. There are people in this course that could teach teach it better than I can sometimes, uh, and there are people who are complete newbies. So we're not uh, giving you a lot of busy work or a lot of testing along the way. Um, the other thing is that within any eight-week period of life. Uh, all sorts of stuff happens. So the official end of the course is in eight weeks of, from today, but I allow up to four weeks past the completion of the course uh, so that people, hi, Nicoletta, glad you could join us. 
Oh, wait just a second. Can you see and hear me, Nicoletta? I can see you. Ah, uh, hello, team. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, yes, it comes a little bit slowly, but yes, yes, I do. Hello, nice, nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you as well. Glad you could join. We're, we're just sort of getting underway and you can uh, watch the, the beginning of the recorded version if, if you feel like you might have missed anything. Okay, okay, thank you. All right. So um, we're just going over uh, requirements for completing the re uh, uh, course. And I'm going to put you on mute, Nicoletta, but you can unmute if you have a question at any time. Do you see where that button is? Okay. Okay. So, um, uh, so the course is designed, so whether you're a newbie, whether you're running a, a, a winery, whether you're a PhD in, in viticulture or enology, uh, I can work with every one of you to customize the course according to what you want to accomplish out of it, all right? So I'll just say that up front. Uh, usually it takes until you know, into the weekend or even Monday to, to make sure everybody understands all of, all of the pieces of things. Uh, and so there'll be a lot of confusion now. My commitment is at the end of eight weeks, everything makes sense. You've gotten what you need out of the course and we're all happy campers, okay? Uh, it's up to you to get the value out of the course. I'm just gonna say that flatly, all right? Uh, we can set up personal calls. We can talk about if I'm going way over your head, if, if it's not challenging enough, uh, if you've got a certain personal agenda for your career, for starting a business, for improving a business you're running. But you need to, to do the work to get and, and participate to get the most out of the course. Um, I'm gonna tell you also flat out, it five, six, eight weeks down the road, I don't wanna hear, oh, you know what? It wasn't the right course for me or this or that. If you're having any problem at any time, set up a call with me and I will get things handled so that you can get exactly what, what you want, whether it's starting your own winery like Ricky Trombetta did, um, she took this, this course uh, 10 years ago. I still stay in touch. Her family's, uh, she's got her winery open and all this. Um, if, if you are being disappointed, if you are fi finding it, it's not the level you need, let me know. We will take care of it, okay? Uh, correspondence. Anything that has to do with the Napa Valley Academy site uh, do not use the communications in that site, and, and that's, that's this, this program, all right? Use my email that I sent you information on, and I'll show it again. So don't contact me through the Napa Valley Wine Academy site. Uh, contact me directly, uh, tim at timhanai.com, and... Uh, and try to use that. Uh, texting me is, is fine, and my cell phone number is on every email I send out, um, but I tend to lose text messages, and that's not how I communicate best. Uh, if and when you would like to set up a personal call, the protocol is send me an email, uh, say uh, I'd like to set up a call to discuss the course and, and my objectives and whatever, and give me a couple of days and times you're available. Don't say I just want to set up a call and then I've got, I don't have any clue um, uh, what, what your timing or whatever is. So email me a couple of days and times and then you'll be responsible for calling me at the appoint, when we set the appointment for that appointed time. So that's pretty simple. Um, and the calls are for discussing any personal or professional reasons you're taking the course, designing activities, all kinds of stuff. 
if you have general questions about about things that are pertaining to the course, really love for you to post those in the Facebook discussion page. And a real quick uh, look at that. This is a private group, so um, people cannot access this unless uh, they have been personally uh, invited and approved by me. So the first thing I want everybody to do is make sure that, that you can uh, to join the group and then uh, let us know who you are and what you do and where you live and all those kind of stuff. Uh, and this will also then be a place where we can discuss different topics um, uh, along the way and also share photographs of what we call homework. Now the homework, there's nothing to turn in. It's com completely up to you but it's, uh, uh, I'll cover what the homework is. It's going around taking pictures and, or uh, you know, observations of, of things about the wine business, okay? All right, so any questions on corresponding with me? For the next eight weeks, I want you to think differently about wine and beyond. Um, uh, I, th I think it's probably fair to say that everybody who takes this course has a passion for wine and learning and tasting and and all those kind of things. And th the wine business does a, a really, really poor job of supporting people who want to learn about the business of wine. And a great number of wine businesses fail because people can't put aside their passion or their personal opinions about something and then look at it from a, a business standpoint. Uh, we're going to uh, talk about and employ uh, one of your, your first uh, uh, assignments is uh, to read information about critical thinking. And then let me juggle back to the um, to the Napa Valley Wine Academy site. So when you log into the Napa Valley Wine Ac Academy, there will be the overview that we're on now, and then there's gonna be a critical thinking assignment, all right? And then we can discuss this on the, um, the discussion form. Critical thinking was imperative for me to pass the Master of Wine examination, and I learned about it accidentally. Uh, I had signed up, I had failed the Master of Wine exam in 1989, felt I had the wherewithal to actually uh, pass it, but couldn't organize my thoughts correctly, so I signed up for a writing course, and I went to the wrong one for three days, and it was for electrical engineers, and it was all about disruptive thinking and critical thinking. And um, so if you don't know about critical thinking, it's the ability to not just jump to a conclusion about any uh, argument or topic or you know, when you're looking at different points of view on something, but it's, it's, it's an ability to stand back. And if somebody's got a, an opinion about something, then what's their opinion? What's it, what information, what kind of data is that based on. And then if there's a different opinion, then, oh, great. So what's that, their, this person's perspective and opinion and, and what's their opinion based on, that kind of stuff. So, uh, so here's, here's an example. A lot of people think, okay, that if I'm a, if, if I'm a, if I have a winery, if I grow my own grapes, if I own my own vineyards, you know, that it uh, gives me a cost advantage uh, versus buying grapes from a grower and I get to manage. There are so many downsides to this simple idea um, that not, you're tying up operating capital of uh, the time and years it takes to, to plan and purchase and prepare and plant and, and then the ongoing management and so on of the vineyards. So what we're going to do is we're, we're going to look at, at various topics from different points of view and perspectives. So I want everybody to do a little bit of background uh, reading on 
um, critical thinking. And then also for anybody that's posting on the Facebook page, uh, before jumping in on a topic or a discussion with your own personal opinions, critically think before you jump in. And, um, and we'll, we'll explain more of that, okay? So um, back to uh, SWOT analysis is a business process that's sort of a formula for critical thinking. And so over the next eight weeks, when we get about the halfway point, we're gonna transition from critical thinking to SWOT analysis. Uh, I will be asking the question, who cares? Um, and this isn't done as resignation or cynicism, but literally there are people that put so much time and effort into certain parts of a business and me messaging and social media and so forth, only to find that nobody really cares. So who cares is a practice. Uh, and when we get into marketing and, and so forth, I'll explain a little bit more about the cat and the cat food, right? But it's a, a great example of who cares because this is extraordinary combinations and look at this and you've got little crab cakes and there's, there's, um, there's personal chefs for your cat, Chef Michael, and the cat doesn't care. All this marketing, all this connection they're trying to, to create is actually with the gatekeeper to the cat. So as we go through the supply chain and as we get to the distribution and sales of wine, we're going to talk about grape sources, grape cost, and who cares down the line about where the grapes come from, the story behind the grapes, those kind of things, and why you should care, and if you're a producer, about the the costs and and uh, uh, having a continuous supply of your raw ingredients, those kind of things, all right? So consider alternatives before posting. And when I say do your homework, it's just a matter of, of, of posting on Facebook and sharing some pictures and we'll get into what kind of pictures and so on, okay? So the next eight weeks, we're gonna think business. And that often means putting aside some very closely held personal opinions about wine quality or, or um, aesthetics of wine. So the homework, uh, has anybody seen this voucher? Uh, I've got a dozen of them. Um, this is a voucher for uh, nakedwines.com and it comes in uh, uh, Amazon uh, shipments. You know, when we make Amazon purchases, we'll, you know, I've got a bunch of these vouchers. Um, so if you, if you see something like that, take a picture of it or provide a website link and let's talk about it. How much does this really cost in terms of getting the cards made and getting them to Amazon and having them put them in the boxes and the cost of a new acquisition of a customer for your wine club ad nauseum, all right? So a little card like that can be a source of an awful lot of discussion. Uh, this is a, a picture of a bottle that was posted by an earlier class. This is at Costco. It's this beautiful imprinted rose in the punt. It's got um, glass stopper and so forth. How much did that cost? What does it do in the logistics of ordering bottles and so forth? This is this is like a easily a half a million dollar additional cost over a number of years to add to your cost of goods. And if you're if you're having a bottle like this and it's so expensive, it is a marketing decision because you want to stand out. But there was unintended consequences of this. The boxes are of an abnormal size. The retailers often hate them. This bottle does not fit in a wine rack and won't fit in most refrigerators. Um, 
when you're getting ready to bottle and if you you're using this you've got to order way in advance and probably pay for certain minimum requirements that can be very cost prohibitive all right and so is it sustainable what is the cost what does it do to logistics what does it look like for the consumer are all questions that we're going to ask over time and then as you go into stores doing your homework would be if you see a display or if you see a special sale uh, it'll come up uh, in in my neighborhood here in Bend our, our Albertson store uh, they put everything on a 30% off so that there's a man, an MSRP bottle price there's a price they sell it for there's a third price if you buy six or more, you get an additional 10% off. And then several times a year, they, they, they have an additional 30% off every wine in the store. Who pays for that? Okay. So that's what the homework is. Nothing to turn in. If I say do your homework, it means take some pictures, participate on the discussion forum, and it's important to get out of the course. Uh, the course resources, uh, every Wednesday at noon Pacific time, and then Mondays at 5 p.m. Pacific are the live classes. Uh, if you're here, you know how to get here. Um, and so uh, after the class, I will process, and let me make sure that I'm recording because God, it's a nightmare when I don't. I got my recording on. Um, and so if, if you miss a class, you don't need to tell me or, or whatever. And sometimes there's even been instances where nobody's live in the class and I'll record the lecture uh, after this, this class is done, I'll, I'll process, post this on an unlisted YouTube site, and then uh, you can go in and view it at your leisure and for as long as you need, okay? So that's the live classes, and I'll send out an email with the link to the video. Uh, the other resource is the Napa Valley Wine Academy site, which, as we talked about, that's this one right here. And so that's hosted by Napa Valley Wine Academy. Uh, the discussion forum, and then we'll talk about the cost calculators. These used to be call, called the Wine Biz Sim programs. Uh, but these are really cool, they're really useful, and, and we'll take a quick look at those uh, in just a little bit. And then your homework, assignment projects. Additionally, there are a number of uh, websites that we'll be going to regularly. The TTB is the US government site for permits and um, uh, all the legal issues and label registrations and so on. So this is the Tax and Trade Bureau site. Uh, we'll also be looking at current topics uh, at Wine Industry Network, winebusiness.com, and, uh, and so on. So um, uh, just, just to let you know, I'll be referring to those and providing links as we go. So the syllabus, we're going to start with the business of grapes. The critical thinking is going to be decision making from a quality versus cost standpoint. And what do those decisions do for resource allocation of time and money? Okay, two big resources. And this is the way we're going to go through the supply chain. And then an additional part of the critical thinking is if you're selling grapes, you're making all sorts of decisions. You've got a business to run. You've got a perspective on things. If you're selling grapes, if I run a vineyard and my business is selling grapes, my perspective on the business of, of vineyards is very different than somebody who's buying grapes. The person buying the grapes trying to get the lowest price, I'm trying to get the highest price. The person buying the grapes wants some very specific assurances of the chemical composition, the ripeness level, the varieties, the, uh, the uh, hang time, those kind of things. 
I want to limit all that. I, if I'm growing grapes, I want a big yield. If I'm buying grapes, you're usually working from, I want a, a low yield, those kind of things. So as we go through uh, each of these elements, we'll look at seller versus buyer, conventional thinking versus new thinking. This is a, a little bit more of an obscure idea, but there are so many quote unquote conventional wisdoms about wine, and they're just not true. <laughs> so we're gonna do a lot of myth busting and, and shattering of, of ideas. Um, the other thing is that if you are a wine enthusiast, uh, uh, the number one reason for taking this course is actually people who have started wine businesses as an enthusiast, but never learned actually about the business. So we'll be doing that. And then later uh, we'll talk about decision-making, especially in production, the winemaker versus the, um, uh, the, the, the uh, chief financial officer or accountant versus sales need versus business needs down the supply chain versus what consumers want. Okay. So this is kind of the overview of the syllabus. I'll leave a moment for any questions if anybody has any yet comments. So, and this is what I was alluding to a little bit before is literally wearing different hats. Uh, if you're talking about oak aging, what does marketing want? What does the winemaker want? What does sales want? And then finally, what does the accountant want? And especially if, if you want to enhance your bottom line, you've, you've got to weigh these decisions between the different stakeholders. Um, wine business strategic planning begins and ends with marketing. Uh, defining and understanding a market. Uh, at the end of the day, everything is dependent on this. If, if you, here's, here's an interesting thing. I actually saw this online the other, other day and it kind of pissed me off and, and uh, inspired me to, to mention it again. Somebody, our winery stands for this. We don't do marketing. We don't do this. If you don't like our wine, screw you. Uh, you know, you're uneducated and so on and so forth. <laughs> so they, they even in, in the scope of all this said, we don't do marketing, but that's exactly what they were doing. Um, and that is their market are for the contrarians, the people that, that love the wine and want the wine and whatever and screw everybody else. So they actually very, very um, inelegantly define their market. Um, so market understanding applies to every wine wine winery uh, wine promotional organization and all of the companies that sell products or provide services to the wine business all right um, in wine business strategic planning there's also uh, important considerations, why are you doing it? Uh, is it for the lifestyle? And there's a lot of people that do it. And there, there, there are people who run wine businesses that are quite content to break even or even lose money because they just love the lifestyle. Uh, most of us need to have income. <laughs> and so, it, you know, that may or may not be a, a a consideration in strategic planning for the wine business. But there's also uh, people who develop businesses for sale or acquisition. So um, uh, very often you'll find that that uh, wine business strategic planning, usually we're, we're, we're all kind of here because of the lifestyle. I'm gonna, gonna guess we all love wine, we're passionate about it. Uh, Many of us are here because we're in the business or want to be in the business or want to start a wine business and, and probably develop income. But a lot of people start wineries with the sole uh, intention of, of uh, breaking even or, or even doing it for a loss so that they can build a brand to sell ultimately. Um, Understanding and mitigating risks of grape growing, of wine production, of uh, packaging, and so forth, 
every part of the way in a successful wine business, you need to understand the risks and take the steps necessary to, to avoid catastrophe and, and mitigating those risks. Uh, a great example right now is the fires down in Australia. Absolutely devastating uh, and a big, big risk. Uh, same situation had happened in Napa and Sonoma a number of years ago. Okay, then the other thing is, as a business, is my business model, is, is my plan sustainable over time? And what the heck am I going to do at the end? You know, um, so exit strategy and succession planning. Okay. So this is the supply chain. Uh, we're going to talk about wine. You need to have grapes. Do you grow your own or do you buy them? What are the options? What are the cost considerations? What does a contract look like? You'll actually, uh, we've got a document uh, that you'll be able to see that's a, uh, a legal document of all the considerations that go into a, a contract between a winery and a wine grower. Um, uh, then we'll go into production. And by the way, the, this first week, we're just going to be getting our hands you know, onto uh, all the programs and, and everything and discussing the business of, of grapes. Then uh, week two, we're going to go more to production in the business of uh, different uh, processes, the finances, and then different, different options for, uh, for getting uh, the material or the finished wine. And then, um, then weeks uh, three and four, we're going to talk more about production and costs and options. Um, when we get to the halfway point, we'll go to distribution. And then at the end of the course, we'll be going to the point of sale, you know, where the, where the wine is sold in restaurants and bars, retail stores, online, wine clubs, internet, that kind of stuff. So this is, this is an interesting uh, 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 chart um, in, in showing a way to look at critical thinking. And this was, uh, this was a study done a number of years ago. It, it may or may not be applicable at this time because there's been a, things are shifting very dramatically and fairly rapidly going into 2020 in, in, the, in the global wine uh, industry. Uh, markets are changing dramatically. We've got the U.S. tariffs uh, going into effect against French and, and possibly Italian wines. We've got uh, all sorts of supply issues going, that are going to be coming down the road uh, with Australia. We've got a very significant new generation moving into wine and coming of age, uh, the millennials and those kind of things. But this is a demonstration of, of what, it, what it looked like um, in 2016, I think it was. If you had a, if you had a grape, uh, an acre of Chardonnay in Sonoma County, uh, the average price per ton that you could get, uh, the yield uh, per acre, which is way different than the myth of what you are told about yield per acre because people lie are struggling vines and only two tons per acre when they're farming six or eight tons per acre. Um, so what does that look like for revenue? What are the, the costs of growing the grapes? And then what's your profit per acre? Okay. Now this chart also then shows what if you took your own grapes and sent it to be processed to make bulk wine? And it showed that uh, that you got basically um, 8,860 or 8,675 dollars was your gross profit per acre uh, by growing the grapes, but it was almost 15 percent higher return on investment or 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 gross profit if you made it into wine and sold the bulk wine. And even more importantly, 
it showed that when the bulk wine prices, bulk wine is wine that has been fermented and, and is, is roughly finished, but it's not been bottled yet. And we're gonna do some fun projects with the bulk wine market. And most people are, are very unaware of what's out there. And when I say bulk wine, it does not mean cheap wine. There are some really expensive and, and high quality stuff out there. But if, if somebody was dealing in the bulk wine uh, market, you can see over from 2010 to 2014, a five year period, big fluctuations in price. And if you were selling the grapes, it's almost a mirror image. So actually, if, if, if you had X number of acres of Chardonnay and you sold half of your, your crop as grapes and then had half of it made into wine and sold, you would actually almost have a, a flat um, income and, and revenue generation from your vineyards, okay? Does that make sense? So that's how we're gonna be looking at things. Uh, interrelated, interdependent businesses in the business of grapes and winery and so forth, real estate, agricultural services and equipment and processing and production and every little pump and tank and barrels and all that, your packaging materials and the companies that provide those packaging materials, human resources, uh, uh, marketing services, supply chain and purchasing uh, at a business to business level, uh, the business of distribution, the business of running wine retail stores and restaurants and internet sales, uh, business that help you attract more customers, con convert them uh, and retain them, and then all sorts of legal and financial businesses and services that all support the supply chain. So by using the format that we're going to do with this course, we'll be able to talk about the, the supporting interrelated and interdependent businesses as we go. All right. Uh, I will say now it all begins and ends with the market. What's your product? What's your value proposition? How much does it cost? Uh, how is it packaged? Uh, how do you connect? How do you make consumers aware of the product? What's the story you tell? What's, what's, what attracts them to become aware of it? And then how do you engage them so that they actually then make a purchase? So they go to a point of sale, a store, a website, join a wine club, restaurant, etc. And then they buy something. That's a conversion. That's taking shoppers and turning them into buyers. And then how do you get them to repeat that behavior and for how long? Okay. So that's what we're going to do. So again, we'll go over this several times. In two weeks, you're going to turn in a project. I'm going to get a little bit started on that and, and show you how these financial calculators work. And um, and then off we will go. All right, any questions to this point? You will have an email and with instructions for login, my partner Chris uh, set you up this morning and it's to winebusinesseducation.com and to the financial workbooks. This is separate from the Napa Valley Wine Academy site and, and you'll have a login and password. Um, uh, anybody who has any trouble setting up on this site, contact me and, uh, and, and we'll get you in. And this is where we have the financial calculators and workbooks, all right? So when you log in, uh, this is what your account will look like. And this is gonna be our first project, a wine cost of goods. I'm going to send you an email with a template of how to fill this out. But let me give you a, 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 a little quick intro and then I'm gonna be following up with, with uh, instructions in a template. When I click on the winery cost of goods workbook, it gives me this. 
We've got many tabs across the top for different pages. And then we're gonna have also a running tabulation of what our cost of goods. We're gonna make a wine, y'all. And you're gonna to have to figure out what goes into the costs. We're gonna talk about this on the discussion forum. Um, and then uh, your first project is gonna be completing a $25 red blend. Again, I'll be sending you instructions when I send out uh, uh, this, uh, the link to the recording of this. Here's how it works. So let me go back to the beginning. You log into this site, you select wine cost of goods. That will get you to this page. And then what we're going to do is you're going to name this workbook. So up at the top, you see it just says winery cost of goods. And so you're going to put Whatever you're going to name your project, it could just be $25 red blend. Um, I'm just gonna call this Navarro Vineyards in honor of Maria. Um, there, you can't use that because there's a Navarro winery in Anderson Valley. Um, so name, name your project and save it, all right? So that's the first thing you do. And again, I'm gonna send a tutorial for you instructions. And now it, it says this. Now, when I wanna go back to this uh, workbook, I wanna make sure when, as you're working on this, you can close it and reopen it and go back to it. Uh, so this is going to be then under your account, once you've created a workbook, I can go into my saved workbooks Here's my Navarro red blend. When I want to edit, I can open it up again. All right. So then we're going to name the wine. And so we're going to call this Tim's red blend. Uh, you put your name, you put the date, and name your winery. So our first project is we are going to do a simulation of opening a winery, okay? And I, I just go Chateau Timbo, okay? When you get the tutorial, it's gonna be a PDF and you can open up the PDF and then just plug in the numbers. You are not expected to know what any of these numbers are, but by doing this exercise, it's quite an eye opener into all the things that go into the costs of producing a bottle of wine. Uh, we've all seen the little infographic, you know, what goes into the cost, you know, the, the grapes and the winemaking and the this and this. This is actually going to give it to you at a killer level. You're going to be able to make a $25 red blend of any range of varietals that you want. Okay, so you're going to be able to pick these out, enter the percentage of the blend, the cost per ton, and those kind of things. I'm not going to get too deeply into this yet. Uh, and Monday night, we're going to do a, a big follow-up. So um, I just wanted to give you an idea of what the workbook lo looks like. And let me show you with a, a finished project then. I get to go into my saved workbooks, and I've got a a template here. So this is a $25 red blend project. I've got my grapes in Cabernet, Merlot, Petit Verdot, the cost per ton, the percentages, and then these are reference numbers for different grapes in different regions, okay? We go into winemaking and production. We turn our grapes into juice. We may add some bulk or finished wines. Um, we then uh, determine once we squeeze the grapes, how many equivalent cases are we getting out of it? So this number can range anywhere from very low to very high, depending on the type of wine and, and how hard you're going to press. And this, this is just so perfectly indicative of, okay, I'm, the harder I squeeze, the more money's coming out. Uh, 
but what's that doing to the end quality, to the bitterness or the tannins and the phenolics? So what's the trade-off? This is the critical thinking, all right? So we'll go through all the production options and taxes and all this. And we're gonna go into the barrel, barrel room and get a really, really deep look at barrel program factors and um, uh, costs and so forth. Uh, cellaring, aging, uh, uh, that's non-barrel related and all sorts of treatments, oak chips and alternatives and stuff like that. Packaging and bottling costs and uh, how much are your labels and bottles and corks or screw caps and whatever. And then it's going to give a complete FOB and cost breakdown of your product. Okay, so don't get scared. This should be overwhelming. And by the end of the course, you should go, I got this. All right. And hopefully you're going to find it fun. I, I'm not a numbers guy. I hate spreadsheets. And all of a sudden I'm in the spreadsheet business. But at the top, I can see what my cost of goods are, what my margin is, what my gross margin is, and, and then the percentage that I'm running. So if these terms don't make sense to you, that's fine. We will work that out through the course. And um, uh, they're very important uh, to know in the business of wine. Okay. Questions? Yes, Tim, I, I have one question. Do you hear me? Yes. Uh, yes. Just wanted to ask you, uh, will we also calculate um, the working force costs? Uh, possibly. Uh, <laughs> what we... Uh, so the cost of labor, uh, mm -hmm. there are a num number of ways you can enter it in, but, but that would be a, a separate set and, and consideration. So, and we'll talk about the difference of what's called the um, cost of finished goods, which is what you're going to get in this, the unallocated cost of finished goods. And then along with that, you would also then need to do a com complete breakdown of your cost of labor, you know, winery overhead, those kind of things on a separate basis. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Okay, and uh, we will also examine viticultural costs. I mean, uh, handwork uh, versus machine uh, costs, or we will not go in that direction. Uh, so this, that's actually a perfect question. Um, you, be, because you've you've uh, registered for this course, when you go to my account, you're going to see there's a whole number of different workbooks. Oh, great, great. Now, for this course, mm -hmm. we're just focusing on this one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you need to do a vineyard P&L, um, we've got a, a complete uh, a workbook specifically and in, in a very, very detailed <laughs> for mm -hmm. putting in similar information. Uh, how many acres, the price per ton you're going to sell it, what's your yield per ton. Uh, it's going to give okay. you a matrix below uh, all your expenses, including harvesting costs per ton. Uh, and mm -hmm. that, that can be broken down into a machine or, or a, a, a complete workout, all your labor, uh, et, et cetera, et cetera. So, okay. So Thank for, you. The, for the basic purpose of the course, if you're interested in a discussion about machine versus hand, that's a great thing to, to post on the discussion forum. Uh -huh, say, uh -huh. Hey, I'd love, love to hear different opinions and look at different costs and the quality uh, trade-offs and, and whatever. Does that make sense? Okay, yes, thank you. Absolutely. And then if this is something that you really want to work on this workbook too, we can set up a personal call to, to allow that. Uh, there's no problem and you'll have uh, access to that also. Yeah, in, in my personal case, uh, I, I choose this course because I'm preparing for the Master of Wine exam in June. 
and business is my weakest paper because I, I come from a very different background. Yeah. So I, that was the reason for me to subscribe. I'm based in Italy, so I would have to wake up at night to be able to follow the course. But we will, <laughs> we'll well, try to Well, it's great having you it. here, and thank you. And so, so and now we've got to figure out who's further away, you or Philip. Philip is in, a, uh, in Sweden near Malmo, and we've got <laughs> you in Italy. And uh, uh, then, then uh, what we can do is we can set up a... A call, a call on Skype, and then the oh, specific Yay. Okay. So it's uh, my kid. No problem. And anything else you way. need to ask? Um, no, I wouldn't. That's more or less. Uh, just um, now, it's the introduction phase. Uh, you you think it will be useful for my case? So we will be able to to cover what is required for the Master of Wine exam or? Uh, Gus Zhu from China uh, just recently uh, earned his credential. And oh, he, cre okay. he credits okay. this course. He said he, he wouldn't have passed it without this course. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. Okay. I, I hope to be, because really I'm not at all good in business and I, I know very, li my knowledge is very limited. So I hope to be able to, to follow up. I will do my best. And, and using the critical thinking, uh, you and I can have a strategy conversation and we're going to do some exercises that are of value to everybody in the course and is oh, special value for anybody who's who's uh, uh, in the MW program. Plus, I'll, I'll, uh, I've got a separate video that I can provide for you on uh, a different paper uh, strategies and critical thinking and, and how to use that in every paper uh, for your, for, for your, uh, your pursuit, pursuit of the Master of Wine, okay? Thank you, thank you very much, Tim. Oh, absolutely a pleasure, okay? And these are the kind of, this is nice because these are the kind of special needs that we're looking for, for anybody who needs to reach out to me um, and let me know and, and the customization of, of the curriculum and certain, certain things to do, okay? Thank you. Okie doke, so that, uh, basically has us for today then. And um, anybody else have any questions or comments or concerns? All right, well, I'll get this uh, processed and usually the recorded versions available within an hour to sometimes if I'm traveling, especially a couple hours, uh, but I'll send you an email. We'll make sure that everybody get, can get into the Napa Valley Wine Academy account, the Wine Business Education Workbook account, and the Facebook account. Those are the, the three things. And then Monday, we'll uh, do a question and answer, make sure everything, and we'll start talking more specifically about the business of grapes and grape costs and those kind of things. Okay? Quick question, okay. quick question, uh, Tim. Korea. Um, uh, with uh, the website on the wine and the business models, um, the units on uh, Maine are American units, uh, pounds and um, acres. Uh, is there an option to change it to your, uh, well, just a you know, metric system? No, uh, and, and um, so for anybody that's, that's gonna be, uh, especially for the first project, use, uh, uh, you'll have to work in, in US, um, standard uh, measurements and then it will also if you're not familiar with the conversions then then you'll actually learn to do those conversions more efficiently um, and so we don't have have this in in hectare and and um, euros that kind of stuff so you'll need to, to work in US dollars but later also I'll explain how this can be reconfigured um, uh, in a couple of different ways uh, to make that easier if it's something you need, okay? Also, uh, those models, uh, do we have access to those after the completion of the course or for is it something for a year only? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And then it, if, if, if you want a continuation, it's a in relatively inexpensive annual license. Um, 
so you can extend it if if you like it. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Thank you. And uh, just a, a short technical question, team, uh, for the Facebook group, uh, we you you send us an invitation or because it's a closed group, right? How how we get access? Yes. I, I miss this part. Um, and if you're having trouble getting on the Facebook, I, 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 I sent everybody a link. If you oh, okay, sign, okay. If you, or, or actually check your junk mail or your spam mail also, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because Facebook sends you the information. And um, if, you're ha if you're not able to, to log in a lot, the number of people uh, sign up for Facebook with a personal account, but signed up for the course with a, a different email address. So if anyone needs, you can just friend me. And when I okay. accept your friendship, mm -hmm. then then I'll invite you as a friend. So if you're having, okay. and, and so just friend me, uh, uh, at, at this location, Tim Han I N W, and then I can add add you that way if you're having trouble. Okay, thank you, thank you. Absolutely. Okay. All right, everybody. Okay. That's our first program, and I try to keep these to an hour. Sometimes they're a little less, but I I do talk a lot. Um, a lot to go through, and we'll reconvene on Monday. Uh, email me directly if you're having any problems and and between now and, and Monday let's make sure everybody's set up they can get into everything and and then we'll get deeper and deeper into the specific projects and and elements okay okay thank you very much Tim. all right thanks everybody great to have okay. you on the call thank you so much see you soon bye-bye <laughs>